we were talking about the motion of the moon around the earth a uh, complete cycle of the moon's phases is a synodic month and so uh, synodic month lined up with the sun until it's lined up with the sun again so that's 29 and a half days but there are other things that are happening so as the moon goes around the earth it moves a little bit every day it's roughly uh, 13 degrees a little bit more than 13 degrees a day so that means it takes you know roughly two days all, almost two days to go from one constellation to the other but the other thing that's happening is that earth is going around the sun and so what happens is as the moon makes one complete orbit around the earth it's not lined up with the sun again so that means if you watch relative to the background stars it takes the moon less than one synodic month to make one complete circuit of the sky so it's really about 27 and a third days to complete one cycle from star to star so if you're watching the moon as passing next to a star I remember when we talked about that the passing next to something is called a conjunction so it's in conjunction with a star it's in conjunction with that star again in about 27 and a third days but from new moon to new moon or full moon to full moon that's about 29 and a half days because it has to move a little bit further in order to line up with the sun again so there's several different kinds of motion that are happening here as the the moon goes around the earth then what happens is that that it it's processing the orbit processes a little bit and so it crosses the celestial equator at slightly different spots the uh, direction of the orbit shifts a little bit perihelion processes we talked about that with the earth so there's many different so there's several different cycles that repeat with the moon one of these cycles that repeats is the cycle of phases lining it with the sun until it's lining it with the sun again you know that's about 29 and a half days and this is what they used to refer to as just the month we now call this the synodic month the synodic month is lining of the sun to lining of the sun so this is new moon to new moon or full moon to full moon it averages about 29 and a half days the sidereal month this is how long it takes to uh, actually orbit the earth uh, to think of it that way the, uh, so this is lining up with the star to lining of the star so this is conjunction to conjunction so so this is how long it takes to make one complete orbit of the earth or, or to get from one constellation back to that same constellation in the sky so that's about 27 and a third days now the anomalistic month uh, uh, is how long it takes to get from perigee to perigee remember the apses process just like they do on earth and so that means that the exact spot in the moon's orbit where it reaches perigee now per we talk about perihelion that's closest to the sun perigee is closest to the earth so for an elliptical orbit perigee is closest to the earth so perigee to perigee moon's orbit's elliptical too <coughs> so it, it actually is enough that you can sort, sort of notice sometimes the moon looks a little bigger sometimes a little bit smaller because it, it's slightly elliptical uh, it's hard to notice the naked eye but it, it can be, be observed uh, and that's the anomalistic month is the time from perigee to perigee it's about 27 and a half days the draconic month this is related to uh, how the orbit crosses the the celestial sphere and so when it crosses the celestial equator until it crosses the celestial equator again or when it crosses the ecliptic until it crosses the ecliptic again that is the draconic month and so that's about 27.2 days and so uh, that turns out to be important because if you're crossing the, e the ecliptic that's when you can possibly get a solar eclipse if you have the right phase of the moon now what phase of the moon would you get a solar eclipse well it had to be when the moon's between the earth and the sun so what phase is that that's going to be new moon if a new moon occurs when the moon's on the ecliptic you can get a solar eclipse 
Well, the moon crosses the ecliptic about every 27.2 days, but the new moon repeats about every 29 and a half days. And so that means they don't quite line up. Well, it means they sometimes line up, but then they don't line up again the next month. So if you get a, a solar eclipse one month, you cannot get another solar eclipse the next month. In fact, what, what happens is you have to go about six and a half months until the cycle gets back in sync again enough to get another eclipse. So that means there's really two times out of the year that you might get eclipses, and they're about six and a half months apart. And we call those eclipse seasons. And, and, and those eclipse seasons shift a little bit through the year because they're six and a, six and a half months apart. Uh, uh, so, so they're not exactly the same time every year. Uh, and and so uh, all, uh, even the eclipse itself would look different because the moons can be a different size because uh, in the sky because of the anomalistic month. And so all these these cycles go together to explain the motion of the moon and to explain eclipses. And we'll be getting to that shortly. <laughs>